In this video, I want to introduce you to matrix multiplication. But before we get to the multiplication itself, let's uh, go back for a moment and think about addition and subtraction with matrices. So remember that for addition and subtraction, your matrix dimensions had to meet certain characteristics. Uh, specifically, the dimensions had to be exactly the same. So the number of rows had to be the same and the number of columns had to be the same. And then when you did the addition or the subtraction, you just added or subtracted the corresponding entries in the matrices. Okay, so multiplication is going to be a bit different but we still do have this underlying requirement that the dimensions have to meet certain characteristics. So let's go ahead and look at that requirement first and then we'll get to the multiplication piece. So here we have a two by three matrix. So it has two rows and three columns. So we're gonna say it's a two by three. And again, that uh, two was the number of rows and the three was the number of columns. And here it looks like we have ourselves just a column matrix. It has three rows and that one column. So three rows and one column. Okay. So in order to even be able to do this multiplication, or in other words, to have this multiplication be defined, the number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. So you can see here that this has three columns and this one has three rows. So these two inner dimensions are the same, so we can indeed do this multiplication, or again we say that this multiplication will be defined. So in those examples where the column here and the row here are not the same values, we say that the multiplication is undefined, so you will not be able to do it. And the reason these numbers have to be the same is because of the way we put these together during the multiplication process, which I'll show you here momentarily. Okay, well, what will the dimensions be of the product matrix? So what will I have when I'm done? Okay, well, that's going to be these other values. So it's going to be the rows from the first one and the columns from the second one. So what you'll have is a 2 by 1. So when I multiply these together, this will be a two by one matrix. It'll have an entry here and an entry here. So it'll be a column matrix with two rows. Okay, so how are we gonna go ahead and put these matrices together in order to multiply them? Well, okay, that's a good question and that's what we're here to answer. So I'm gonna take this problem right here. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit because I want to show you a good way to visualize what it is we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this first matrix down and I'll do it right down here. And so those values 7 and 4, negative 1, 2, 0, and negative 3. Okay. And the second matrix, this column matrix, I'm going to kind of raise up and I'm going to put it up here, and I'm going to leave plenty of space here horizontally, and I'll show you why we're going to do that. So these entries were 2, negative 6, and 1. And what I'm going to do here is grab a different color, and I am going to put another matrix right here, and this is going to be our product matrix. Okay, the reason I like to do it this way visually is because, well, we already said there's going to be uh, two entries here. It's a two by one, so I'll have an entry here and an entry here. And look at how these rows and how this column lines up together. Well, when I multiply, I'm going to be taking these rows, which there's two rows, and this column, one column, and I'm going to be putting them together here in this product matrix with two rows and one column. Okay? So here's what we're going to do, and here's why the number of columns here had to be equal to the number of rows here. It's because of the way we're going to put these together. So we're going to work across the row from left to right, and we're going to work down the column from top to bottom, and we're going to pair up these entries, and we're going to multiply them together, and then add all those products. So what that's going to look like is the first entry in the row is 7, first entry in the column is 2. So I'm going to take 7 times 2. And then the next entry is negative 1 with negative 6. So negative 1 times negative 6. I'm going to be adding these things. 
but of course this was negative, so the minus comes along. And then the last entry is zero, so plus zero times, and the last entry here is one. And you can see here why I put some horizontal space is because in order to show all my work, I'm going to need some space here horizontally. Okay, well that's going to be this first entry from this first row and this column. So the entry right below it will be from this row and down this column. So first entry is 4 and 2, so 4 times 2 plus, next entry is 2 and negative 6, so plus 2 times negative 6, and the last entry is a negative 3, so negative 3 times 1. All right, so what do I have here? Well, 7 times 2 is 14, negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6, and then this is just, well, plus 0, and 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and negative 3 times 1 is a negative 3. So my product matrix simplified becomes this 2 by 1, whose entries are 20, and it looks like negative 7. So here is my product matrix. So the big thing about this is whenever you have these two matrices that you're multiplying together, put the first one over here on the left, and then what I always like to do is raise the second one up so I can put my product matrix right in this spot so I can line it up with the rows and the column, or columns if you have more. And then I'm just pairing everything up nicely for that multiplication, and then I'm adding all those products. And then once I'm done, just kind of finish doing your work, and then here's your product matrix. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look at a second example to see what this might look like. So in this second example, we have this 2 by 2 matrix, and we're going to multiply it by this 2 by 3 matrix. We see that the inner dimensions are the same, so we can do this multiplication. And the dimensions of the product matrix will be 2 by 3, from the number of rows here and the number of columns here. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to rewrite this first 2 by 2 right here. And those entries were 4, negative 5, 2, and 3. And I'm going to raise up that second one and leave plenty of space horizontally. So 1 and 2, 3 and 0, and then negative 2 and negative 1. And it's always good to leave extra space. Uh, the bad thing is when you don't leave enough space and you're cramming all those numbers in there. Okay, so the product matrix will fit right inside here. And we said the dimensions would be 2 by 3. So it's these two rows and these three columns. So yeah, seems like it'll work out quite nicely. So let's go ahead and do this. And remember, we're going to pair up uh, the rows with the columns, these entries. We're going to come across the rows, so from left to right, and then down the column from top to bottom. So this first entry, row one, column one, will be the first row with the first column. And again, it just lines up really nicely. So four times one, and we're going to add to that 2 times 2, okay? So moving on, we have 4 times 3 now, plus 2 times 0. And finally, it's 4 times the negative 2, plus 2 times negative 1. Okay, so that's that first row with all three of its columns. So let's go ahead and run through the second row with the same three columns. So negative 5 times 1 plus 3 times 2. We also have negative 5 times 3 plus 3 times 0. And finally, negative 5 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1. And as you do this, especially when the dimensions are larger, you're really going to see a lot of patterns that emerge here. So this column, 1, 2, you'll notice the values 1 and 2. This column is 3 and 0, so 3 and 0. And this column is negative 2, negative 1, so negative 2 and negative 1. So you'll see they all line up really nicely. And the row here with the 4 and the 2 well, here is a 4 and a 2 and a 4 and a 2 and a 4 and a 2. And similarly with a negative 5 and a 3, negative 5 and a 3, negative 5 and a 3, negative 5 and a 3.
So lots of patterns here, the way these are put together. So let's go ahead and finish it up and find out what this product matrix is going to be. So we have 4 times 1, which is 4, and then 2 times 2, which is 4. Here we have 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 0, because 2 times 0. And finally, this negative 8 minus 2. And down here we have a negative 5 with a positive 6. Here we have a negative 15 with a 0. And a positive 10 it looks like with a negative 3. So when I put all of those values together, my product matrix, which is a 2 by 3, 2 rows and 3 columns, I have 8, 12, negative 10 for those entries in the first row, with it looks like positive 1, negative 15, and 7. So here's the product matrix for this second example. So as a kind of a quick recap, whenever we're doing this, we first need to ensure that the matrix multiplication is defined, and we do that by looking at the dimensions of each of the matrices and ensuring that these middle values are the same, so the number of columns from the first one and the number of rows from the second one have to be the same. And then the uh, dimensions of the product matrix will be these other leftover dimensions. And then we just set this up. We come across the rows, down the columns, multiplying and adding. And so uh, one quick final note about multiplication. You'll notice, uh, maybe if you have already noticed, but uh, the commutative property will not hold for matrix multiplication. What I mean is if we were to flip these two matrices around and try this multiplication, we actually couldn't do it. It would be undefined. So the commutative property does not hold. And in another video, I'll talk more about all the properties for matrix multiplication. But there's a quick introduction.